What's up, YouTube? Welcome back. Today, I'm very excited to have a good friend of mine, Dr. Deep Pachu, joining me. He is a nephrology fellow approaching his last year of training at the University of Connecticut. Dr. Pachu, welcome. Thank you, Dr. Connor. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you for having me on your channel. Yeah, happy to have you. Today, we're going to talk a lot about nephrology, how and why to become a nephrologist. Uh, so without any further ado, we'll get started here. Can you please explain to the viewers a little bit about what is nephrology? Yeah, so I mean, by definition, the nephrology is the study of the kidneys, both normal physiology and diseases that happen to them. Um, but in actual practice, nephrology encompasses a lot more, including a lot of hormonal abnormalities, fluid balance disorders, and a lot of electrolyte disorders um, are a big portion of our daily practice. And what attracted you to the field? So I can actually say the exact day when I fell in love with nephrology, third year med school, Dr. Bear was my nephrologist. Um, all through med school, nephrology gets a, a bad rap in terms of it's a complicated or physiology heavy uh, subject. It definitely is, but um, he was one of the first uh, attendings of mine that were able to link what I learned in the classroom to what actually happens in real life. I remember going into um, rotation with him. We went, we went on to the wards. We saw this patient, labs weren't even back yet um, from the day, from the morning labs. He looked at the urine studies and was like, oh yeah, the patient creatinine is gonna be this today. Two hours later, spot on. My, my mind was blown. I'm like, this is absolutely fantastic. And a big portion of nephrology is really just physiology and how it relates to the human body, even outside of the kidneys itself. So nephrology is a, a, definitely a physiology heavy practice, um, but it gives you a huge scope of practice you can deal with very very sick patients if you're interested in that if you want stable patients good lifestyle you can also do that in nephrology if you want to practice primarily in the outpatient setting um it's just the scope of practice for nephrology is amazing which is a big 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 thing that attracted me to the field yeah it seems like a very cerebral field a lot of brain power dealing with these fluid and electrolyte abnormalities but i know there's an evolving portion of nephrology that is more hands-on and that's interventional nephrology. Can you tell us a little bit about what that is exactly? I know it's relatively new. Yeah, so nephrology itself, we, we our patients require a lot of procedures. So lots of times to make a diagnosis, we need to get a biopsy of the kidney. Lots of times patients end up getting renal failure and they need procedures done so that they can start on dialysis. So the uh, as of right now, or in the past, I should say, a lot of this was outsourced to the interventional radiologist. A lot of this was outsourced to the surgeons to put in fistulas and things like that to, to access dialysis. Now nephrology is starting to do some of that themselves. So interventional nephrologists will do kidney biopsies. Um, they will put in temporary lines for starting dialysis, and now they're able they're even able to put in fistulas, um, minimally invasive procedures to start a fistula. Uh, and then some patients are started on other forms of dialysis, like peritoneal dialysis. And so the interventional radiologist can put in a catheter to start that as well. That's awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about for current medical school students or even college students, what does it take to become a nephrologist? Yeah. So, I mean, one of the, the benefits of nephrology is that it's not really, I mean, yes, it's a study of the kidneys, but the kidneys are very interconnected with just about every other organ system. And so there's nothing specifically you really have to do to, to, to know before you start nephrology. You just have to know the body as a whole. So again, the, the path to becoming a nephrologist is very similar to a lot of the other subspecialties. You're gonna be doing four years of undergrad, four years of med school. After med school, you're gonna uh, specialize in internal medicine if you're looking for adult nephrology or pediatrics if you wanted to do pediatric nephrology. So you do your three years of internal medicine and then it's a two year fellowship in nephrology. Um, the one, Bennett, the one uh, advice that I give to a lot of people is that, again, nephrology is very interconnected. So a lot of people end up sort of, I don't want to say pigeonholing themselves, but they do everything in nephrology. They do all their electives in nephrology. They do all their rotations of nephrology. And I think a lot of um, the stuff that I've learned that I've been able to apply to patients is coming from the rotations I did in cardiology, in GI, in an ID. And um, so my biggest advice to anyone who's interested in nephrology is yes, definitely get exposure to nephrology, see what they do, see what they do both in the hospital and in the clinic. Um, but remember that if you are in a field if you end up going to nephrology, that is very interconnected. And all the experiences you have from the other subspecialty rotations are gonna do you wonders in terms of being able to put the, the whole puzzle together when you're treating a patient with kidney disease. 
I think you make a really good point, not only for nephrology, but really any subspecialty within medicine, that no matter what organ system you are particular, particularly focusing on, being a good internist and knowing the body as a whole is going to be instrumental and very critical to becoming a great subspecialist. So I'm glad that you brought that up. You also mentioned a little bit about the training. So four years of undergrad, four years of medical school, three years of internal medicine residency, and then two years of nephrology fellowship. That's one of the shorter internal medicine fellowships with a lot of them being three years. We did talk a little bit about interventional nephrology. How many years is that after the two years of nephrology fellowship? So all the nephrology subspecialties are all one year. So there's three that are ACG and accredited. There's internal um, uh, interventional, there is critical care, so we do nephrology critical mm. care, and there's transplant. Okay. Um, all those are one year. And then there are some other subspecialties that are emerging, uh, like glomerular disease, which are not ACG and accredited, but they're also one year and you'd be sort of super, super subspecializing at that point. Got it. So overall, if you want to do just nephrology, two additional years, any of the subspecialties, it would be a total of three years after internal medicine training. Gotcha. You know, I think it's really important when you're picking your subspecialty, not only to go into a field that you enjoy and you can find fun in going to work every day, but also important is compensation because we do train for a long time and pay a lot of money to become physicians and also work-life balance. So a little bit about compensation, I looked up the Medscape 2020 Physicians Compensation Report, and obviously any report online about salaries needs to be taken with a grain of salt because it's a combination of salaries throughout the country. Obviously, different areas of the country are going to pay more than certain areas, and then private versus academic practice is going to be a large pay gap. But the average compensation for a nephrologist is, is very nice. It's $306,000 annually per the Medscape 2020 Physicians Report. So I think that, you know, obviously that should not be deterring anybody from the field. That is a very healthy compensation. But talk to us a little bit about the work-life balance, because again, I think that that's crucial when trying to determine which subspecialty you want to do for the rest of your life. Yeah, so again, nephrology gives you the benefit of, usually you get to pick your work-life balance. So there are practices in the States, especially up in the area where we are, that are very outpatient heavy. They do not do a whole lot of inpatient call. So basically they're seeing patients in the clinic and they're seeing patients in the dialysis center. And maybe once every couple of months, they might see a week of being in the hospital. And so as an outpatient, just in clinic and dialysis, you're coming in at eight o'clock, you're done by four or five o'clock. You're not really doing anything over the weekends unless you're on that one week every couple of months where you're in the hospital. So your lifestyle can be absolutely fantastic. At the same time, if you do want to do a lot more inpatient in the hospital work with sicker patients, you will typically be joining a practice that does a lot more in hospital calls. And so if you decide to go that route, you're going to be on call probably a lot more frequent, maybe once a month or twice a month or two weeks, I should say, out of a month. A lot of people, what they do is just earlier in their career, when they're younger and they're having a problem being able to do many more calls, they will do a, they'll join the practice where they can do a lot of inpatient exciting. It's a lot more uh, hands-on doing procedures in the hospital and those sorts of things. And then as you start to get older, you're starting to have a larger family and you want to be able to spend more time outside, they'll transition and they just won't do as much inpatient and they'll focus on on the outpatient world. That's really nice. I mean, after, again, four years of medical school, three years of residency, two to three years of training, you've put in nine to 10 years of very long hours. You have the opportunity to finally have normal business hours, no weekend call. It sounds like an eight to four, eight to five schedule. I don't, I can't think of anything more attractive personally. Um, you know, to become a physician is very selfless. You give up the majority of your 20s. So it's nice to be able to enjoy the fruits of your labor in, in your early 30s to uh, you know, finally have some sort of a social life outside of medicine. It sounds like nephrology definitely gives that opportunity to you. If you wanna to continue to be selfless and put in those long hours, you can, you can continue to work in the hospital and really see the, the action, the sicker patients, which is what a lot of physicians really get drawn towards because they're very interesting. They are fun to treat, fun to see get better. Um, so it seems like you can really customize your career after your training's done in, in this field, which is, is really attractive. Yeah, definitely. So and then one point I wanted to make towards the, the, the salary aspect of it. Over the last decade or so, there's been a bit of a notion that nephrologists weren't 
paid as much as some of the other specialties. And that was true because a big portion of nephrology's income comes from treatment of patients on dialysis. And so when the insurance companies change how much they reimburse, the salary comes down. But you can, as you can see, over the last couple of years, the need for nephrologists is starting to skyrocket. The number of people with diabetes, high blood pressure, that are getting kidney disease now is unfortunately going through the roof. Mm-hmm. And so the, the future looks promising. I mean, you can tell to people on salary that you, you quoted like that same Medscape salary five years ago was significantly lower. Yeah. Um, so I definitely want to make sure that people know that, you know, like you said, salary should not be uh, something that deters you from the field of fraud. If you're interested in it and you like the, the, the aspects that fraud provides, salary should not be a reason for you not to pursue this field. Totally. Tell us a little bit this as we is- close up here, what are your future plans? What do you plan on doing after training? Yeah, so I'm interested in joining what will hopefully be sort of a, uh, a mixed practice. I'm not interested in doing any subspecialty, no interventional or, or transplant for me, but I definitely am looking for a practice where I can do private practice at the same time still being connected to, to a medical school so I can still teach fellows, residents, medical students. That's awesome. Well, best of luck, Dr. Pachu. Thank you so much for joining me today. I think this has been great. You've shed a lot of knowledge on the field of nephrology. Hopefully some people can find this useful and, and go into the field because of your words today. Uh, I appreciate having you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Connor. Anytime. Pleasure. Anytime. Uh, and that's it for today, guys. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button at the bottom. If you have any questions for myself or Dr. Pachu, drop them in the comments below and we'll be sure to get back to you. Until next time, have a good one.